so um, I just wanted to make uh, another quick video about the um, the black hole that we saw on Wednesday on Black Hole Wednesday. Uh, I wanted to um, talk a little bit more now that I've had some time to think about about it and do a little bit more research and um, and uh, show you some exciting um, things that came up as I was trying to rectify what this was and what this meant and uh, so basically I just want to I want to say something very important I want to say that um, Ken Wheeler was right okay Ken Wheeler was right and uh, that is really great um, if Ken Wheeler is right it means that I am right because I picked Ken Wheeler to uh, of all the independent researchers, I chose to make a video series called Understanding Ken Wheeler's Missing Secrets of Magnetism. And uh, because when I ran across his work, I felt like it was really important. It was, uh, I felt like um, what he was saying was true. It rang true to me. And as I, the more I studied it, the more um, I was able to rectify what he was saying and what he is saying. And so I'm just going to play this for you. Okay, this is um, Ken Wheeler gloating. This is Ken Wheeler saying, I told you so. And he deserves to say, I told you so, because he did tell us so. He told us in so many ways. And over the years, he said it over and over again. And uh, I talked about black holes quite a bit. And so I'm just going to play this. I'm going to let him gloat. And then I will uh, tell you uh, more about this. I don't know if I should say I told you so, but I'm going to say it anyway. I told you so. I've made, I think, about 10 to 12 videos on black holes, and of course what they are is incredibly simplex. They are, of course, a supermass that has no magnitude. The reason why they have no magnitude, we have no parallel for this in our world, is that the dielectric has overthrown magnetism's ability to keep the mass within the visible universe. It really is that simple. We can't actually understand that in a logical sense because we have no parallel comprehension, but I told you in a video about a year and a year and a half ago, let me actually stop this video of mine, a year, year and a half ago, that uh, when they finally take a picture of a black hole, it will look exactly like a uh, supercell. This is the image of the magnetic toroidal field underneath uh, the supercell right here bright ring around the center and uh, black in the middle and let me actually go over to a top-down view right here there we go there's a top-down view of the magnetic field and it looks exactly like that I said this a year and a half ago I think my exact words were <clears throat> is that when they finally take an image of a black hole, and everybody wanted me to make this video, when they finally take an image of a black hole, it will look like the center of a supercell. It will be toroidal, and it will be bright around the periphery, and dark in the center, exactly like a supercell, because there's only two conjugate principles in the universe, magnetism and dielectricity. This, of course, is the plane of inertia in the center, right here, where it's black. Yeah? Yeah? Very, very simple. Everything is capacitance, resistance, permeability, permittivity, magnetic permeability, dielectric permittivity. The universe is really that simple. It can't exist any other way. There are only two conjugate principles, dielectricity and magnetism. The geometry of magnetism is toroidal. The donut shape around the black hole here is toroidal or donut shape, same as the construct of destructive interference around the image of the supercell. And black in the center, this is the... Uh, portal, if you will, I hate to use the word portal, but the portal to counter space, to the plane of inertia. This is it. I made this prediction exactly a year and a half, I know it was about a year and a half ago, in a video I made on uh, black holes, and I've made, like I said, 10 or 11 of them. So, I was 100% correct. There's the image of the black hole, and here's the uh, image of uh, the magnet underneath the supercell. Yes, Ken, you were 100% correct. You were 100% correct. Congratulations. I want to congratulate Ken Wheeler because I believe he was 100% correct. And uh, 
if this is true, if this is correct, it mean it's very profound. It's very important. It means that um, a magnet and a black hole are the same thing. There is no difference between a super strong magnet and a supermassive black hole. Okay, so. Um, and there's more evidence for this. This is just one picture, but I'm going to show you another picture that is going to um, make it more, more um, clear. Okay, so I'm going to play another video. Let me go back here. Okay, so after the big announcement, I found all kinds of, all kinds of black hole videos. And, and what this video is showing is it is showing what the black hole would look like if you could rotate it and see it from different orientations. So let me just quickly play that. What they're gonna do is they're gonna spin it. So now they're spinning it. Okay, and it looks kind of cool. Okay, they're spinning it around. Now I'm going to stop it and backtrack a tiny bit. Now I wanna show you, let's see if I can stop it just in the right time. There we go. This image here. I recognize this. I recognize this picture. Okay, this is the picture of a supermassive um, magnet under the influence of a ferro cell. Okay, I'm going to show you an image I took. So this is from ferrocell.us. Okay, this is a um, their website with all with a bunch of experiments and. In the week leading up to the black hole announcement, I felt really compelled to build another ferro cell. Um, he's calling it a ferro lens now, so we can call it a ferro cell or a ferro lens. Okay, I really wanted, needed to build one. I felt compelled to build one, and so I had my brother 3D print me the light ring, and I wired up the light ring myself, and and uh, I got the two pieces of glass, which. I got from Tim Vanderelli, and uh, he gave me a bunch of other stuff as well. And so I managed to piece it all together and this uh, got this picture of the dielectric inertial plane. There is um, a two inch by two inch by, by one inch neodymium magnet underneath this ferro cell. And this is the picture I got. And uh, I don't know, he, so, he was very kind in putting this picture up on their website. So I think it looks really good but I also think it looks like that. Okay, so I made up this image. Here is an image from, on the right is the image from a simulation, and on the left is the my ferrocell image, and another ferrocell image that I took from a different orientation. So I just took a snapshot from that simulation of two orientations that match the two orientations of, of the magnet. And you can see that they're very similar. And the one on the top is really hard to dispute. Okay, this is a magnet on the left and this is a simulated black hole image on the right. Now, the results of the Event Horizon Telescope, which supposedly vindicate relativity, and I don't have a problem with that, means that we can trust the simulations. Okay, the simulations predicted this kind of shape, and the simulations also predict this kind of shape on the right here, which exactly matches the magnet under the influence of the ferro lens, ferro cell, ferro lens. And so this is super exciting. Ken Wheeler is right. Ken Wheeler, you are right. Um, and your your logic is sound, and um, and I understand it, and I appreciate it, and um, and there you have it. Okay, so what do all these things have in common? There's a common thing. There's a common um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? There's there's something that brings all of these things together. And I believe it has something to do with fluid dynamics. Fluid dynamics is what the universe is doing. But the only way the universe could be doing flu fluid dynamics is if there is an ether and if the ether is a fluid. Okay, 
So here's an article I've been wanting to show you guys for a while. It's called Turbulent Black Holes Grow Fractal Skins as They Feed. So here's what they see, what they wrote. Feeding black holes develop a fractal skin as they grow. Now these are simulations that they're doing. Okay, they're, they're um, you know, realizing that black holes and fractals are related, okay? That's the conclusion of simulations that take advantage of a correlation between fluid dynamics and gravity. So gravity and fluid dynamics, there's a duel between gravity and fluid dynamics. In particular, there's a duel between black hole um, physics and fluid dynamics, okay? So to investigate what the horizon of a black hole looks like um, at real time when it's a feeding, supposedly, they took advantage of a mathematical duality between Einstein's equations of general relativity, which describe gravity near black holes, and fluid dynamics. Okay, so fluid dynamics and black hole dynamics are the same thing. And I believe fluid dynamics and the dynamics around a magnet are the same thing. It's all fluid dynamics. And so there's the unification, there's a unification between the dynamics of black holes and the dynamics of a magnet. It's called uh, magnetohydrodynamics, okay? So we, you know, we could have one language and just say fluid dynamics and we'll be able to, you know, talk about black holes and magnets in the, in the same sentence practically if once we realize that all of these things are the same and fractals fractals play a role okay fractals play a role as well so that's where fractals and black holes and magnets converge and so yeah that's basically uh what i want to talk about fractals are still in the picture i'm not wrong about the fractal nature of the universe ken is right about the nature of of magnetism and his description of magnetism is bang on, bang on, and I understand it, and that is what I'm trying to explain in my understanding Ken Wheeler's Missing Secrets of Magnetism. So I'm just trying to explain things, and I'm trying to develop a, a common language so that we, we can uh, talk to each other in a non-ambiguous manner. So I'm very excited about this picture. I'm very excited about this picture, and I'm not unhappy that relativity is proven right again because we need relativity in order to make the picture on the right and we need a magnet two pieces of glass and a little bit of ferrofluid to make these pictures on the left and these pictures on the left are describing the same dynamics as these pictures on the right it's so very exciting very exciting and you know, the reason I, the, the main reason I'm mostly excited about this is because Ken Wheeler gave me the idea for the principle of incommensurability, which I'm going to be speaking about in Montreal at a conference called the International Institute for Human Sciences. This is a science meets spirituality conference, and I'm planning on talking about the principle of incommensurability and now that I know that Ken Wheeler is right about this, I can be sure that he is also right about the principle of incommensurability. And so I can feel confident that I'm on solid footing when I give my talk in Montreal. So that's about it. I think I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, I will keep you posted if, uh, if anything new comes up. Have a good night.